Motiv is in Yemidin, Eddie Mohammed Shaban did one now come in Pewa, said Mo Shaban, and they had the exclusive interview. Eddie Abram and Sue El Hon, or more Masu has not the interview, no Eddie Bram, a highly divergent in Nama, can't send by, and once he see ya, and Debbie Ayusu Jimmy, saw ba, Uber says you, we ye, and now to me see Piesita, Nam Pa. Uko Ukunua and I say Uko a branch or on swims and Pamor Piafo, Usujina, announce who a bojuma, se concoma for giant, and so El Honum to a bar says your own, was no and can be bar. Highly divergent, a be yamau, a be an hour start to eighty cent to be a woman say, ah, where dear, and your normal scent. Highly divergent, El Homa, Ubun, sir, Yamabia can kawaka can or hono, no, no, highly divergent, for be for fawasse, highly divergent, no, for be for fawasse, na ensu into me, and wow, no CP, and sita, and so on. I lady in there, a bama gana and banning. Now, called drugstore, be a moi, would you call besides our to highly divergent? Would you say, oh, baby, and so at a shard bakery, my can say, Jania, ye did ye, and who won't fast away ye pa, and say, I was sending power, we are saying, I did ye, or shard bakery, a bama, pa, no chinchilenchi, I'll be dear, or who bet me, ask me a CP, a sita, and so el honum. Now, a pan on the Ajidin, our central region, a good man's a group to be precise, Ajini din el, but our region, be a moi, who ye engagement, wedding, funeral. All that programs are a whole one by no, who bet me a co, no a co or dow pano, and so a whole one bet me the abrobe with me a number no screen as no affair, Mr. Osman. Now I'm a pano, I know a denny, I know so a day, and so a was also, and a Kelly's garment, a fashion, Mantadia Miche, a you be a fair, be a meco be a simos, you see, I did a brand, no, what brand do ye pao, and yamia, Kelly, na I am a man, why a fair, Kelly's garment, a fashion home, a casua, American junction, opposite the point, and so a Kelly Bemo and Tadi. And bar and bear money in a Kelly, a pam or pam wedding gun, suit, any be beer, minim a dear Kelly, any way we ask him, and put designer on who be that will be piano, Faco Kelly or Bemos, I designer, I'm a one so I a fair and so Sasso and a Edu Bright Kettings, and so I a Kettings if he made a Missy Kettings if he my Tuni Dean Kettings fee, Okoa Kettings out the best show office, a fee, a beer hotel, I will see Upa Sahoya fair, Kelly Bemo who Kettings no, Edia Show, no, I beba be shet. No way design the whole mama or Kelly Kettings I bear for all. I do our time out into the free Edu Bright Kettings or Kumasi, a Jiso, and so on. The number I was screen as a free Edu Bright, not on board. Sasu and the Dominion event and catering services. A Jani or a Jani, a Jani dear, a year, where dear Benku, Fufu, Amalao, Chase, a Banina, the Dominion event and catering services. A bit to me, a comma, and so on. Omono, who your wedding from on the Baba Yamo. I fro from my baby amo, a year from my baby amo, or me a cake, a year pastries, any na and so ever honum. But aside that, and also, over to me, I order with Giane, and so ever, maybe I would feel fear and there, menu can say, when your chum would be a best row, or to me, Pio, Pesa, or you, when you come, I would demo, Fred, a year the Dominion event and catering services. Na among bro, a year Giane, I will feel a home, your door to door, a year delivery, and so our phone number, I was screen, I see that to a comma. And so, Eddie Amau, way more any Abedio Kwapi Pian Pukuma, a noom, our master as near Eddie, a more TV interview, and there, any coach came grant, and so Eddie Bebremo, and so El Hon, me a chaya home, nay a bar, coach, I ready, and Samuel Dawson, yeba. More TV, the best. All right, more TV soon, you said Eddie Kai, a kaino, Yeni Akra had to fuck head coach, Kim Tyron Grant. And then, you know, you have an interview, you know, so I will hold on to it. And then, you know, we interview now, you know, if I and Coach Kim Grant, um, why are you ready? So, I'm going to be every exclusive be a movie here, I will have a motive. So, yeah, I'm going to say, Coach Kim Grant, I didn't come on. Coach, I'm going to say, we, we are very grateful for honoring our interview. Yeah, no problem. Thank you very much for having me. All right. You know, Coach, I didn't come on. Coach, um, it's a year now that you've started working with Hatu Fook. Um, what are the positives you pick out from the work you are doing now? Um, there's been a lot of positive um, in terms of the club getting a new sponsorship, a kit sponsorship, um, the development, the philosophy, the the structures being, foundations being put in place, the restructuring of the youth system. Uh, and there's lots, lots more going on behind the scenes that the supporters and obviously um, the board and the CEO, myself, are trying to make this club better for the long term. All right, Coach, um, you were appointed by Mark Noonan, who is the former MD of Hard to Folk. Now he's not there. How difficult is the work now missing Mark Noonan at his post? Um, no, it hasn't been difficult at all. Um, it's been a very straight transition. Uh, Mark did a very good job. 
and uh, Mr. Moore, uh, our new CEO, has been fantastic with me. You know, we have a good working professional relationship, and um, you know, we we are communicating every day. We're trying to improve things every day, um, and as well as the board. You know, we have our, our scheduled meetings and everything. So we we are we are progressing behind the scenes. But overall, obviously, it's frustrating when you've been here a year and you're trying to put these uh, structures and uh, things in place and there's no league. So it's, it's, it's been a long, long year in terms of not having an active football and then trying to get the progress of the club going. All right, coach. Um, combining director of football and then the first team coach of Accra to Folk, how difficult combining these two jobs? Um, it's not difficult. It's just how you plan ahead. Um, um, of course, there are challenges um, that we have to deal with. I have to deal with, um, but um, I enjoy it and uh, I, I like the, the the job, and I like both both uh, challenges. And that's why I came here for. And I, um, I've I've those played those roles before anyway in Europe, um, in uh, in other professional structures. So I'm quite used to it. Um, I know it's new to some people, but um, when you plan ahead um, and do the work, it's it's not a problem. Yes, at times, you know, it's there's even I'm doing more than just both position. I'm doing also supporting um, other staff and helping other things. So overall, it's it's a uh, it's I'm enjoying it and and I'm hoping that uh, it will bring success. And even either I'm here now or later, or if I leave later on. Um, I hope I leave a good platform for the club have a foundations to continue to be successful. Any coach can grant any din komono and then wa my assurance be who tell your account say juma na oye no pe. And and a coach e kan obro fu mo and so e the mountain interviews no in some bebre o ho afi na ye ba be kan e the am mountain wo na wo hwa message of fewumia na onu so subscribe to mo tv na onu so enhwe interview ni e come back to coach Kim Grant in the come coach um you believe in uh, formation and then we've seen that in your couple of games that you've played you have this three back you have Robert Adusua you have a Jerry there you have Mohamed Alassane why don't you switch to three back and then allow the, the the back to work for you and then play more of the attack um, well, we, we have a very attack-minded team, um, whether Denchi or Boni or whoever plays left and right backs. We are, we always, uh, the formation is, uh, it's not a static formation and there's lots of movement, uh, changing of positions and that. And for me, it's, it's you know, I prefer the back four. Uh, I feel that that's more solid and that's the way we want to play. And uh, and that's kind of the the DNA of the club, which needs to start from the uh, the junior side, so it goes from uh, Rolox to the uh, Auroras. So when there's a transition, a pathway for the young boys, there is no. Yes, there is other ways where I can tweak the system a little bit, which I, without the opponent knowing that I've tweaked it. So w w there are different formations in within that system that we, I can change the balance of the team uh, quite easily with it, to effect. If they counteract in our system, I can effect that system and then counteract their their formation. So, so there is a, there is ways of doing it. Um, but yes, it's a four two three one. But there is lots and lots of tweaking goes on in there as well because I've got my left and right, uh, my midfield, the number ten, everybody rotating. So it's quite uh, difficult for people to understand. But there is a there is a, a function in there. So you believe that uh, the four back is quite solid than the three back. Yes, you know, it depends. Every coach is different. Um, you can have a three back, but then you get exposed by the wing backs because the wing backs go forward, so you get exposed in the areas. But at least with a four at the back, you have a solid four. And we have we got very good defenders. So for me, um, we got very attack minded defenders. Um, whoever plays, you know, I'm very confident. Um, yeah, but uh, that's some, something I really believe in. And uh, But as a whole, as a team, we have to defend as a team, not as back, just a back four or back three whatever you like because when my left back is going we have a back three already if my right back is going we have a back three so it's 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 so like i said to you it's it's all how you interpret it and how you you put it into practice and then and then go from there into a game good you believe in the youthful experience you have manaf umar michelle sapon anthony cuisin uh, when you came you've introduced these young players in your team um what what motivated you to do that as a coach for how to folk, you know how to folk fans are much demanding. Why do you push in the youth boys whilst you can go for the experienced ones who can get you resource? 
Um, look, first of all, you know, if you're good enough, you play. Um, simple as that. And of course, the club has invested in the youth uh, academy for a while, and there needs to be a continuity, a pathway for the youth, because that's what's the point of having an academy if you can't promote them. And also, it's also financial viable. That why do we have to go keep spending when we can produce our own players and develop our own players? Yes, when it's required to bring in an experienced player or a quality player, we look at it. But it's not about buy, buy, buy. And I think this club has been buying for the past nine years. And have they been successful? Um, so we, it's, it's something that we looked at, I've looked at. And also you get the enthusiasm, you get the energy, you get the 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 enjoyment from the youth players because they, they want to prove something. Um, but at, it's at the same time, you've got to have the quality to go with it. And also it has to fit into your, your system or formation that you play. Um, but overall, I think also it gives the opportunity to young boys, oh, we've got two players coming to your hearts. We can actually, you know, if we push ourselves, we have opportunity also to get into the hearts team, which is really gives good motivational uh, for the youth side to actually improve themselves. And, and also it shows out the good work that the coach, youth coaches do. And, um, and of course, we still need, to, still need to improve. We're doing that. The proper man is going to be established. So the club is going really well. It's been progressing really well. But overall, um, I think also we have to look at um, the age factor as well. Um, obviously, it's difficult to know what ages players are. So, um, but I want a high energy team uh, full of enthusiasm uh, who really enjoy playing football. And then obviously the, the younger players, I've got that more. Uh, of course, you can't, you can't gain experience by playing. And these players, you know, they play one year together, two years, they gain experience. So why would we not go to buy to buy experience? If you don't play these players, they won't gain experience. Um, so that that's how I look at it. Uh, but overall, I believe them, I trust them. Um, we're restructuring the youth, like I said. And hopefully that next year or the year after, we'll start producing even better players. All right, the new coach Kim Grant in the Casa El Moti with Sonia Gusu Edin Komo. You have to go deep into the conversation. I have said in my echo coach, you spoke about aged players, but a um, few months ago we saw how to focus signing Emmanuel Mental of Carella United, who is aged. And we want to know you, you, you started a system of youth players. Why did you sign Emmanuel Mental? The fans want to know. Um, the reason I signed Mental was because obviously we had a lot of uh, youthful players in there. I know Malik has, has left. Uh, people were questioning about that, but Malik was over 30. Um, and the fact that also that um, he wanted to move on, he was his decision that um, he wanted to move on. And he didn't sack uh, Malik, he no, did that, he didn't want to leave. We had a good conversation, um, and obviously he's got to, he's got family to think about. Uh, it's also his age factor, it was, a, it was re we sat down, we spoke man to man, and we, we came to a mutual agreement that he said he wanted to move on um, from that. So it, for me, it wasn't. Um, and nobody sacked nobody. Um, so for me, it was important that uh, uh, he's an adult. I'm an adult, and we both spoke professionally. Uh, he's a great guy. I don't have any issues with him at all. He conducted himself very well at, during my time, and I hope that he's successful. But I understood that he wanted to go somewhere else, and maybe you know because of his age, he wanted to you know get a good contract outside of Ghana or something for his family. And, and I totally understand that. It's, uh, um, I've been in those situations as a player when I'm a 32, 30, 34. You look, you know, you look beyond them because then they, you look, and also you understood that where we wanted to go with the, with the, the age and the, the group of young players. With Minta coming in, he's he's only 27, 28, you know, and he's he's a 28 years. Yes, and um, he's got a seasoned, uh, he's a season, seasoned Premier League player. And for me, it was important that having lots of young players, we need another good one experienced player in the midfield um, and you don't forget also some of these boys also in season McCarthy um, has played a lot of games for Sharks um, I used to play a lot of games for um, uh, Wafa you know so these are young but they're very experienced that's what I'm looking at so I'm looking at for young players that who have pedigree of playing the Ghana Premier League uh, for a while um, as well as um, Dominic um, yeah uh, but Manaf look Esso is also young, Bonnie is still young, um, so we got young, young players that have got good experience in the in the in the Ghana Premier League. So it, people say, yeah, we got a young team, but they've they've been in the system. So for me, it was important that I get the right balance, um, and of course, it's also 
important to have one, at least one. You got Ben Mensa there as well, and you got uh, Minta there as well. So it's important to have this balance. And you got you got Fatal, so we got three um, older players, and Mohammed's four. So it's, it's it's important, good balance we have, and that mixed with that young youth, youthfulness, as well as the so. It, and that's the reason why Pali I signed it because obviously Malik went. And there was other options that we I was looking at, but unfortunately those options were off the table because they went to abroad, and that's 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 you know they wanted to move move. So that's 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 the, that's the case. Coach, what is so special, unique about Imano Aminta? Um, well, he's got his qualities. Every player is different. Um, he's very good at distribution balls, uh, long passes, short passes. And he's very, very disciplined in what he does. Um, look, he's he's missed a lot of preseason, and I think uh, people have been unfair on him because he didn't do any preseason at all. He was signed very late, and you know our boys have been training for a good six, seven months. Uh, we've had high intensity of training, and also he's understanding, he's fitting into the group, he's understanding how we play. Um, so I think people need to be a little bit careful of why, you know, criticizing because I think he's missed. He's only just now getting his fitness up. And, um, and there's lots of stuff that we're trying to improve with in terms of understanding what we're trying to do at this football club. You know, it's, it's a totally different environment to Carella, where he came from. It's a totally different environment. And a lot of players have come here and it's a totally different environment. So, um, and as well as the, the training and the, the scientific ways we're doing things. So it takes time to adapt. But in our crowds, we don't have time. So it's we, the players are helping him, I'm helping him. I'm sure the CEO is helping him. So we, I'm sure it would be very good for the club. Um, but I think we need to be patient because he's just come, he just arrived and he hasn't hardly done any pre-season. So we try, I'm trying to get him to get as fit as possible. Coach, um, you played a friendly game against Olympus. That is the home cup home and away and against Wild Stars. You scored just two goals in that game. All the three matches you've played, the fans are complaining bitterly, especially the, after the game against Wild Stars. Coach, you don't... You, you, your strikers are now scoring. What is the issue? Uh, there's no issue at all. Look, end of the day, the same. This, I was criticised for this when we played the friendly match before the NC, and we finished top scorers and we least goals conceded. So for me, I'm not worried about. I, if we weren't creating chances and we weren't missing, if we create, if we are creating chances and we're missing, I'm really happy with that. If we're not creating chances and we're not having shots to go, I'll be very worried. And at the moment, I know people are saying that we're conceding, and we have to remember. I've not had my full squad in place. I've had eight national players, you know, uh, gone with the national team. And it's been very kind of uh, complicated, if you like, um, pre-season, because I've not had my full squad. It's only actually today I've had everybody for the first time in what, in three months in, in training. So it shows that the it's been very, very uh, in and out, in and out. Players, four players go, four players come back, two players go, two. So it's been very disjointed in kind of way of having the whole squad to work together and to be bonded together. So of course it's it's, it's a bit of instability there, but now everybody's got. We got three weeks to prepare before the before the league starts, and it, it, everybody's really happy and um, the spirits, the energy levels is really really good, and um, we're looking forward to it. And I think the players are really looking forward to it. It's been a long year uh, preparing. Um, but overall, I know the expectations that uh, people saw at the NC, and I believe the players will 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 will, will do well. I'm not I'm not I'm not concerned about that at all. And I think um, I'm asking the supporters to uh, be patient because um, they have to understand that there's a lot been a lot of disruption with the national players going and coming, and um, had a few injuries. Players been sick, so it's 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 it's. Um, but now everybody's here. Everybody's 100% fit. So I'm really looking forward to it. Coach, um, are you looking up to add up another player to your team? Uh, possibly. Um, we just at the moment, if anything comes good, we doing. I'm doing. I do a lot of research. I do a background checks. We, I don't just sign players for the sake of play, sign, signing players. Um, you know, we talk. I talk to people. Uh, we do. Um, I'll do diligence to make sure that the player that comes in fits into what we're trying to achieve as a football club. Um, I think gone are those days that. Players are going to come in just for the sake of coming in, and um, we have to bring in. And the player that has to got to come in has got to be better than what we have. We have to think. We have to be careful of that because, which what was the point of bringing a player on the same level or below that uh, might not even fit into this young, tight group we've got now? We've got a very good unity, 
and the player that has to come in has to fit into this group and uh, be as a team and as one. And so, you know, there's more to football than just oh, buying a player or a good player. It doesn't necessarily make thing that he's going to be a, he's going to be successful. Um, and you can see how some of the top top European clubs they buy players, and they're not successful. Um, and in the end, they've stuck with a player with on high salary, or you paid a big transfer fee for the player. So I think we need to be careful with that, and I'm very mindful of that. And as well, we have a budget. We have a squad number of squad of players we want. Um, so also the financial implications, we have to look at that as well. So it's not just about going spend, 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 spend. Also, we have a, uh, a restricted budget, and uh, we've got to make sure that the club is run is financially viable for the long term. Coach, you have Bernard Atta, Kofi Koji, Joseph Eso, and then you have Koji Obin Jr. up front. Will you add a part of that striker? Look, you've already just stated we got how many five strikers. How many? Only how many strikers can play two? So why do we need more strikers? Um, at the moment, I trust the players. I trust the strikers we got. It's what we have. I think um, we see how the the first round of the the league starts. Uh, but I really strongly believe we got a very strong, powerful forwards. Uh, we got Traore, we have got Esso, we got um, Cook, Kofi, we got Junior, we got Bernard. We got, so we got five strikers. All right, and these five strikers can play in any position at the front three. You know, I could play four three three. I can play four, 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 two. I can play three, five, two. I can play um, two, one, whatever formation you want. You, you understand? So then these players are able to rotate, and that's what I like about my my forwards. They can play in various positions. Coach, a lot of fans are complaining that uh, Kujo Abin Junior, formerly of uh, Nia Salamina, he is an out and out striker, and then you usually play him at the number eleven position. And Kujo Obin Junior is very slow. Why do you still stick to that formation? Whilst you have other options or players who have the speed and can be used at the wing. Well, I'll, I beg to differ because I think Kobe, uh, Junior is not slow. Maybe his act, action, uh, running action looks like slow, but he's not very slow. He's very powerful, very skillful. Uh, and actually, that's his natural position because I actually spoke to him, and he actually the team he played for the last time was he's playing as a left winger, and that was actually his natural position. Again, I do my due diligence, my background checks on every player to make sure that they fit into. He can play as a striker, he can play as a left or right. Um, but look, he, he's he scored he, in the NC Cup. He scored some critical goals for us. Yes, sometimes sometimes his performance are not to his level up to the level we expect. I remember against Liberty Professionals at Dance. And you know, even against um, the, the last friendly we played against Wa, yeah. he came up and scored. You know, so he's he's a very vital component because he's a type of player that you will get your goal. You know, even if he doesn't play well, he, he's a, he's a threat um, in the air. He's got great left foot. Um, we we're trying to improve him. I'm trying to work on him psychologically. Um, and he's working really hard to improve himself. Nobody goes into a game to play a bad, have a bad game. Um, that goes for every player. Um, I go into a game to win. I don't go to lose, you know. But unfortunately, it's football. You can't win every game. And yeah, but we are. I am trying to really improve his game, technically, physically, tactically, uh, psychologically. We every player is here is working really hard to. We know that we can play better. We know that. Uh, but we are in pre-season, you know, it's not, it's, I, I've always said that it's uh, it judges on when the actual real action starts and um, there's, uh, there's lots of things going on, we're trying to improve, improve the players, I'm trying to improve the players individually as well as collectively as a team. Coach, finally on the goalkeeping department, the fans are calling for Richard Atta, Richard Atta from Elmina Sharks. And then uh, the information I'm getting is that his contract is running out and then he can join any club he wants. And looking at your goalkeeping department, you have Richmond Ayi, who is your uh, number one goalkeeper. You have Ben Mens and Richard Beidou. The fans are still calling for another goalkeeper because they believe that uh, goalkeeper um, Ben Mens is aging and then Beidou is inexperienced. What do you talk about that? Um... Look, th these are still good goalkeepers, okay? Ben Mensa is a very experienced goalkeeper. He's good with, with them, he's good with the team. Um, and also, with hopefully, that um, part of the structures I want to put in place, uh, maybe who will move him into a different role in the future within the club as a technical member. So that's, that's my foresight, you know, because I want to, because he understands what I want, expectations in terms of how we want to play and the professionalism, the attitude, the the training programs. So that's kind of the long-term side of looking at Ben Mensa 
um, to be part of in future. Maybe take one of the youth academies, goalkeeping positions or something like that. So we're looking at as a progressive club um, to maintain this kind of stuff. With Richard, he's a young guy. He's coming through. He's still got a lot to learn. Um, and yes, it's, it's, it's a good opportunity for him as well. Um, we've been watching him. I know he makes some individual mistakes, but I will come because as, as a goalkeeper, uh, it tends to be highlighted when a goalkeeper makes a mistake rather than a defender making a mistake, you know, because it's a different, different situation. But um, three of them are very good. Um, but yeah, if like I said, if anything comes, we, we'll look at it. Uh, but at the moment, that's what we have. And uh, I, look, I like to develop and improve players. Um, and I believe I do so. So for me, um, yeah, if, that, if something comes up, we will look at it. Are you really interested in uh, Richard Atal for Elimina Sharks? Um, I'm not looking at commenting on those uh, our transfer activities. Um, but at the moment, um, I'm, I've got 27 professionals. I'm focusing on to really, really be mentally ready and prepared for the, for the league ahead, the challenge ahead. So you mentioned 27 professionals. How many players are you going to work with in the coming season? Well, that's my squad. That's my squad. Obviously, we got Dan Cordier injured as well. Um, so obviously, he's he's got long-term injury. Uh, unfortunate for him. Uh, but you know, I wanted uh, every position. I wanted two players in the same position. So uh, so it, and with the same quality. Um, and it's competition. And I want players to challenge. Uh, have a friendly competition in terms of if they're playing, you know, of course, encourage them to do well. But if they're not on the level that we're expecting, they can equally come in and take the man, man baton on and try to push each other. So I want those competitions. I want uh, players to fight for their positions and try to maintain their positions. And it's important that uh, that competition, but in a, f a team kind of friendly way, but take into the, the league. Um, because if we keep winning, they stay in the team. You win if you don't, and you know we'll have to look at how to adjust, how to improve. Well, if the, the player that's behind you is training hard, so if you have an injury, suspension, whether they can, you can equally come in and do the same job. All right, any coach came Grant and Ekasano, and then interestingly, our man had a lot of revelations, and the amount person move on and on. And I think it's an interview where you hear, I mean, Jenny said, "Kim, every interview we're gonna have a bit of you." The amount person yet here, no, no. You try and hunt him, yeah, but any coach came Grant. Ebekasa, Nayashi, the final part of the interview. Yedamwasi. All right, more TV soon. Yes, I'm a Makwa Babium. Yeni came Tyron Grant, and they may be saying the meaning of Tyron. No, now what church you must say? Now, and maybe so Kim Bell is super calm. No, you know, I do want you, Mukakawa, you know, Edin Komo. Coach, um, the fans are saying that when they suggest players for you to buy, you don't show interest in whatever they say. Look, <laughs> people you have to remember the whole structure has changed at this football club. I'm director of football. Um, I'm a head coach of this football club, and also I've worked as European elite scout for West Bromwich Albion English Premier League for seven, eight years. Um, nobody has brought players to me. They've mentioned players to me, but nobody has brought players to me. And if they do bring players to me. There is a pro system in place. I request for certain information. I request for certain things. And if they don't bring it, then I can't do any look at those players. And it's not just me. I look at the players. Okay, I've made the final decisions. But you can't, players, you can't play. People just can't bring players for the sake of players. This is a crowd hearts of folk. Do you think that people just bring players to Guardiola's doorstep and say, look, Guardiola, come for a player? It will never work like that. Or Klopp or whatever. There is a process in place. But they can suggest that to coach. They can suggest, fine. But that doesn't mean that I don't look at them or I, I don't take in. But because I don't look, and like I've already stated that there is a there is a process in place, and every player that is is brought to the table, whatever, is looked at. If it doesn't fit, that doesn't mean that I don't want the player because it doesn't fit into what weird type of player we're looking for. Yeah, Coach, yeah. answer this one for us. Did the supporters brought uh, D.O.C. Taylor and you said you wouldn't sign him? Well, that's, that's a big lie. That's a big lie. And that, that's a fact. It was mentioned to me. Nobody's brought anything to me. Um, and that you can vouch that to straight to the CEO himself. That's a big lie. And that's, that's the problem with this football club. People try to cause chaos and try to make rumours. And I, on, on my hand on heart, 
That's a big lie. And whoever is making those rumors, I say, it's a joke. And even the player himself, I found out that all this was going on. I actually went to Europe. So why why would you sign uh, uh, be after a player where he's already signed a deal in Europe? Th that's that that's the the, the 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 way it is. And people are trying to cause, saying that I'm trying to block whatever I do. I have a I have a football club to run. I'm a director of football. I have to make sure that the process, the financial aspects, um, the whole restructuring of this football club, because we want to win. We want to be successful. We want this club to achieve trophies. You know, that was Stella, all due respect to the player, has only actually scored goals in this NC tournament. The year season before, he hardly scored any goals. As actually people make background checks on the player, what his success rate, goal ratio was prior to going to Carrella. So do your fact back checks and everything. And it's not a fact that I don't like the player now. Whoever's saying that they brought a player to me, it was mentioned to me, but there was no statistics, no, there was no due diligence information sent to me. So whoever said that's a big lie. And I apologize that people might be upset about it, but it's a fact. And I'm, I'm a very honest person and I'm straight and I talk straight and I tell people there's facts. And sometimes people don't like to hear the truth. What is the relationship between you and your players? I think very good. I think um, I treat them as uh, adults. I work with them. Um, we communicate really, really well. Um, I try to get them to express themselves, not to be afraid to speak to me, um, because everybody has an opinion. And basically, it's important that what information they need is to get the best out of them. And it's very, very important that I have a great relationship with them, open relationship in terms of any personal social problems, uh, if they've got any issues uh, financially or um, football-wise, or they want to do extra work or they want to do certain, they are free to come to me. And you can ask any player that uh, if they need help, support, everything, I'm the first one they can they can support, get support from. And um, what I also try to create is unity and bonding, uh, which is really important part of having a successful team. Um, yeah, so for me, on my side, on my side, I think, I think we got a very, very good relationship, and we laugh and joke. We train, we work professionally when we need to do. I take the boys out sometimes, they, they, you know. They, so for me, it's not a problem. We, are, I think, we have a great uh, camaraderie and uh, togetherness. Good. 2019-2020 will commence on 28th of December. What is the target from the management and you as a coach? Oh, for me personally, of course, um, any coach wants to win titles. Um, this club obviously has won a lot of titles in the past years. Um, and of course, I'm sure board chairman and the board, uh, the CEO, the administration, the fans, we all want success. I'm not different. I'm not different. And as much as this club has been craving for success for the past nine, ten years, it's, it's, I, I want to be the first one to as well achieve success for this football club. So I'm asking the play, supporters that if you're hurting, I'm hurting as well because I, I don't want this team to lose. Nobody wants this team to lose. I don't want this team to lose. So what, do, what I can say is we'll do our very best to try to bring success to this football club. I can't promise we'll win the league. We might not win it this year. We might win it next year. We might win it third year. I don't know. You, you can't, nobody can tell the future. But what I can assure is that you're going to have a team that's going to have a never say die attitude and a winning mentality. And as you've seen for all the games so far, even the friendly matches, um, we've drawn some. We've got to go behind, but we've always come back. And that's the kind of mentality, winning mentality, never say die attitude that we don't give up, even against Kotoko. We were right down to the earth. We just kept on pushing, pushing, pushing. And you can't, two halves are never the same. So it's, it's always important that, uh, yes, there are things I'm working on defensively, um, but at the same time, we've not had the complete squad in place for the team to, to, to be solid as I want it to be. But for me, I'm not concerned. But overall, I believe that we all want to win, and f especially for the supporters. Um, but what I request for them is actually be, even we have a setback in the game, they should support the players because I know they'll come through and win those games. Ten years of a trophy droughts, and you know the track records of our crowd to folk winning Champions League, Confederations Cup, Premier Leagues, FA Cups. Coach, the fans really want the trophy. Do you have something that you are going to put in place to do your best, grab the trophy for the fans? We're just going to work hard. I'm going to work very hard uh, myself, and I believe the players are going to work work very hard. Um, and off the field, 
the administration, the board, the CEO, everybody's going to work hard to try and achieve that success. If he comes this year, brilliant. If it might come next year, but everybody wants to see progress. All right. The 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 last four four or five years has the club has been a little bit in the doldrums, uh, and there's been too much negativity. But I need positivity from the fans, from the supporters, from myself, from the team. We need that because I think this club has been too negative and also thinking about the past, 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 past. I think we need to be progressive and proactive and we've got to look forward and we'll try to make this team much stronger year by year and hopefully that we will bring success this year. If it's not this year, but we want to see that we were challenging for and then kick on from next year. But we hope that we'll be quite success this year. All right, good. Um You've been talking about challenges of the club. One year at Hartu Fook, what has been the major problem of the club? Um, there's not been a problem, but the, the fact that it's obviously uh, the time scale, uh, not having competitive match. Um, obviously, we had an NC, which was great for us. Um, and also, it gave us that time to actually find our way where we want to be for this new upcoming season. Obviously, we have the Pupperman uh, pitch going to be done. Um, so there's, yeah, there are challenges, but it's something that we haven't managed. And um, obviously, we put in some new scientific stuff in, involved, like ice baths, uh, supplements, uh, nutrition, uh, the the food. We're trying to change the whole kind of the professional outlook of for the players to actually perform to their peak uh, because they are the engines, they are the stars to make the. They need the engine. They need the the well all. Uh, world oiled body to function properly so we want to make sure that that's happened so yeah there are lots and lots of challenges but I'm sure not just us there's other clubs also in Ghana who have lots of challenges but we have to overcome them and we've got to turn those negative challenges to positive and that's what I try to do. Coach, do you involve the former players of Hato Folk those who have played, those who have won caps, like the likes of Amir Kramri Mku, Don Bote, Sami do, do, do you Do you foresee that working with them will help you or do you think you can do, just do your work and then go? Um, at the moment, look, I don't know much of those players because I, I don't know much about uh, the history of those type of players and stuff like that. But the door is always welcome to, for them to come and speak to the players. Maybe some of these old players have had hardship, you know, and tell they just motivate the players. I don't have an issue at all. Um, in terms of um, coming into working in a professional environment, obviously they're going to have the qualifications, um, obviously the status, the players, st um, the license status is all changed now, you know, so there's got to be a lot of, lot of um, professional certification is required uh, to meet their, their, their level and the standard of coaching and st certain things like that. Um, and lots of other clubs are going to find those situations as well. Um, but no, I don't have a problem. They can come and speak to the players. I, they can come to change rooms. You know, just for me, it's not a problem. Um, and but in those certain, and that's just part of the reason why, you know, maybe in future Ben Mensah could go on to be one of the um, ex players, if you like, to be on the coaching technical staff to a uh, develop because that part of that, what he under, he's worked on me for a year, is part of also a coaching uh, technical know how how to develop players and also coaching styles of things. So in the long term, yes, maybe we look at it, but at the moment we're just trying to get the foundations right and we want to get the playing side right and we're going to try to focus on this season. And then as time goes on, we speak to the board, the CEO, we need this, we need that, can we do this, can we do that? And also it's obviously got to fit into the budget. Um, for, so there's lots and lots of stuff going on. Uh, but it's important that we, we structure the club right for the future. Coach, do you have a goalkeeper trainer? Yes, we do at the moment. Um, but obviously, um, obviously we're looking at the Auroras, we're looking at the youth side of things. And nothing, it's not going to happen overnight. People have to understand the football club a structures needs to be built. They, they are complaining that the, the goalkeeper trainer currently is not a professional one. Uh, why? He's been here for a while. He's, he was here before I came. Um, we will look at certain situations uh, in the, as time goes on, um, but these structures need to be put in place long term, and it's not going to happen overnight. And you've got to find the right people, technical know-how to come in, you know. And also, there's a financial side to it as well. So you've got to look at all this stuff. 
the Pubman project is going to be built. There's going to be youth uh, structures put in place. There's going to be other technical uh, staffing and uh, administration going to be put in place. But until the foundations, the structures are there, we can't go to those to, to those situations first. All right, coach. Thank you very much. I'm your new coach, Kim Grant, and Aidan Komoni. Yes, share the final part of the discussion. Um, a lot of fans are saying that you recruit your players based on some study regions and one western region and also central region. How true is this? Not at all. Um, I know somebody reported this to me, and I think we've only got what two two players from one player from uh, two players from central region. That's it, um, and the rest were from. One player from Kerala, so I don't know what they're talking about. Um, this dominication from Kerala and then Imano from yeah. Then they, Okay, then if I sign Darius Taylor, where is he from? Kerala. So what, would that be a problem? <laughs> so if I sign Kayeke, as everybody says, where is he from? Kerala. So that would be a problem as well. So come <laughs> on, it's ridiculous um, for me. Um, if all the players are from Tamale and they win the league, would people complain? No, so what's, what's the issue? Uh, for me, it's not a problem. I think it's ridiculous that people are judging that uh, I'm looking at. No, th these are t players that are playing in Kerala. One was playing uh, in uh, Sharks, where I was the sporting director. And I believe that he will bring quality for us. Um, um, what, uh, this guy, Minta, he's from Sunyani. He's not a fan, he's from Sunyani. So I don't know why people say he's a fanti guy. He's from Sunyani. He just played for Kerala. So I think people need to be. I think these are petty little things that it's, 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 it's people just trying to cause issues, which is for me. It's, it's. I just let it go over my head. I'm not. I'm not too worried about that. For me, it's important that from the first game onwards, we are on point, and um, I'm sure all these things will be forgotten if we start winning games. All right, Coach Kim Grant, eh, Kasa, and there are a lot of information. So, uh, I think say, the SEC is the SEC is a good Coach, I can't try it. And I have to say, so, I have to share my personal life, Kakra. I have to say, I have to say, Black Stars, Kakra. Information, you can't just share one go. And so, I have to say, 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 I have to say. Coach, um, were you born in Ghana? Uh, yes, I was born in uh, sec uh, Secondary Takradi. Secondary Takradi? Yeah, Kujukrum. Okay. And you left to um, England? Yes, um, obviously my grandfather is Power Grant. Um, I think, I'm, I'm not sure if everybody knows about that. Um, um, my father, is my, he's his firstborn. So obviously Power Grant is uh, one of the big hitters in uh, Ghana's history. So um, yes, and I left Ghana when I was eight, uh, when Rawlings took power during the military coup and everything. But uh, most of my life I was living in UK with my, my, my mother. So, it's Good. Um, looking at your life, um, just at age eight you left Ghana. Can you tell us the teams you played in Europe? Yes, I played. Um, obviously, I started at Charlton Athletic. I went through a youth system process. Uh, I was two years, 15, 16. Uh, I was there for about eight, eight, nine years. Uh, I made my debut at 17 years old in the English Premier League. At that time, it was called First Division until the sponsorship changed to the English Premier League. Um, yeah, so I played there for about eight years and I made my debut at 17 years old in the first team. So, as you say, the rest is history. Then I went to Millwall, Luton. So I played for about six, seven, eight English teams. Then I went to play in Belgium, um, Portugal. Um, I had some stints in Germany and stuff like that. And then, obviously, I went to play in Japan for two years, Malaysia, Singapore, uh, South Korea. So uh, yeah, I've, uh, overall I played about 18 professional, 18, 19 professional clubs. Um, very, very rich experience. Um, and obviously from then on, I went into coaching. I was coaching UK. I established an academy in Czech Republic um, in terms. And I obviously at the same time, I was working for West Bromwich Albion as a European scout for the first team. And I had uh, Roy Hodgson, Di Matteo, uh, Steve Clark, um, some some very very good coaches, um, uh, Tony Mowbray, Sam Allardyce. Uh, so I was working under these guys, scouting for them, and uh, it's obviously um, it was it's, it's been a very rich experience. Obviously, I would worked on a board level, and unfortunately, people didn't know my background 
what have I been, I've actually achieved because I, I was out of sight, out of mind. And when obviously when I came to Ghana, uh, I took uh, Nana Butler brought me to um, Ebushua Dwarfs and I signed a, a short term contract for three, four months. And he asked me the club because I think at that time the club was bottom of the table, 10 points. And I think we went uh, nine games undefeated, won all nine, 10 games and got them out of relegation. We almost finished in the top six. Um, but my mandate finished and obviously I had an opportunity to go and coach abroad. And that's what I did. And then um, I went back abroad and I came back. Uh, also Dr. Ndum contacted me. I was coaching in Bangladesh Premier League and uh, got to the team to second position during that time they qualified for the um, what do you call it the Asian Champions League uh, federations and then Dr. Ndum contacted me to see if I can help rebuild uh, the club as a for the Sharks and also uh, build an academy for them I mean a football academy and what I restructured the club itself as well as work re, um, restructuring the football club and then um, you know obviously people saw my work and um, and I'm here. Obviously, Mark Nuna obviously was looking for a type of uh, coach that had best of both worlds: European um, coaching philosophy or coaching structure where they've been and played, as well as somebody who knew the ground, uh, the grounds, spoke the language and everything. And maybe um, I was the one for him. And um, I had my interviews. I'm sure he interviewed other top coaches from Europe abroad. And he believed that I was the one, and and it was a challenge that um, he knew that I've I've done those roles as a director of football, as a sporting director, and he, those roles where I can do both. And uh, I I said to him I could do both, and it, for me it was not a problem. And my CV speaks for itself. And uh, now uh, you know the honeymoon period is over, um, and I know that I know there will be challenges. I know there will be. Um, people against me it's normal nobody's going to like everything I do um, but I'll try to make everybody happy the best I can um, and make sure that um, my experience as ex-player as a coaching as a scouting um, we're putting a lot of uh, emphasis on on me to bring success to this fo football club and uh, and that's a challenge I'm really looking forward to and I'll do my very best what you, did you play for Black Stars and how many uh, matches did you play for the Black Stars as well as how many goals did you score for the national team? Quick one. Um, I think I scored about four to five goals. I think I played overall. Officially, I think I played about seven, eight, but unofficially, including friendlies, I played about 14 matches. You know, even one game we played in uh, Germany against a second division team, I think I scored three goals or something like that. So those were not put on record because they, they weren't on official matches stuff like that so that was a great time in uh, that during that you could if you like you can say i was the one of the most the ones kind of opened the way for the expats you know uh, whites to come back to play for the black stars from europe and everything and it, it was good it was a good experience uh difficult times you know the exposure the me social media is not how it used to be never had social media back in those days so the, the exposure and everything was not as high as it is now. And uh, obviously the scrutiniz scrutinization of players, uh, way of life, social life is totally different. You know, football now, that compare the dynamics of football during my time, Tony Abo, I believe, it's totally different now. And um, football has moved on a lot, technology-wise, scientifically-wise, player-wise, in terms of social responsibility in terms of being more an athlete now you've got to be an athlete to play this football match to, to be a professional football player and there's lots and lots of professional fundamentals that needs to be support that um, so yeah there's a lot of changes and it was good times at that time all right coach Kim Grant and man in the background here yeah, wrapping up with the interview and so uh, and so finally yeah she and the coach into so it's me the interview you know if you coach um people want to know that people uh, people are exaggerating that you are an european confirm to us your family background um obviously my father is ghanaian uh, black my mother's white english um my grandfather is george afro grant also known as pa grant um so we you know the grand family's got a very rich rich history in this country um i was born here uh, got dual nationality, 
So for me, um, yeah, I speak the language. Um, so can you speak the uh, fancy very well? I'm a tumka fancy, but um, <laughs> sometimes potos of them. I'm reaching out now. Now I'm fancy that we be all hola. Oh, but sometimes we do both about my twisting and cry, but obey ye. I record it. It's bad man. I bagan I pepper. I don't know. Made in India. Who favorite buy about it? Oh, Charlie, me, me too. Made in India. For me, I am from. Oh, I'm sorry. Me do palavatics, India. All right, so time with Coach Kim Grant. It's been very interesting here at uh, the interview. Grant, I've received a lot of test messages about the interview, and Coach Kim Grant have done service to uh, the questions that was asked unto him and he has done everything justice to them as well my name is shaban mohammed you can call me mo shaban finally we go to coach kim grant he will tell us what he has for the fans no i just want to say look believe what we're trying to do please believe in the players um don't believe on rumors believe on facts and i think um it's important that we have that important information going out to the supporters to know that the, the truth of things um and you know, and if there's any, it will come through the club social media itself. If there is a force, normally there's a lot of force and negativity. Let's try to bring that positive and that energy for the players to really perform and give you the achievement you deserve. And um, I hope and pray that I bring the, the, the success to the, you guys, which you deserve. You're the heartbeat of this football club, and um, and really be get behind the players because they are very good players. And if you embrace them and support them, I believe they will bring you that success you deserve. And uh, um, let's all get together, work together as a team, and then we'll achieve the great things together. Thank you. Coach Kim Grant, and I akasa enso ya honinti wa tremu niya ewase moye moon supporti team. Highly divergent Ushad Bikri Sasu and a Edu Bright Kettings and so El Boye Chidom Sasuna, the Dominion Event and Kitchen Services Omunina El Boye Chidom Sasuna, Kelly's Government and Fashion Human Tarea Mission, Emufepa, Kelly's Obama Kim Grant and Tare, Ama Kim Ashan Tarama and Hyde, IFA and so El Women or Masoya Senior, you to me the interview in Edibrema, and they had to folk head coach IFA Kim Grant, Kim Taron, no account you. Uh, it's my middle name. Um, obviously, my name is just Kim. It's not Kimberly. Kimberly is a girl's name. Um, <laughs> Kim is a, it's just a straight Kim. And I think some people have got Kimberly from, I don't know where this comes from, but uh, yeah, Kim Tyrone Grant. Tyrone is my middle name. Um, What's the meaning of the Tyrone? Uh, it's just another, another middle name. I think if you're a Nigerian, you have 27 names. So just I've only got three. So um, and I'm sure, I can't remember the day I was born, but uh, I think I'm, they call me Kojo or something. I, is that Friday? Friday born. Yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. So, there you go. Coach, uh, what will you tell Mo TV viewers? Hey, Charlie. Mo. Mo TV. Charlie, I can't you, Jimma. Mo TV. Orokodo. My name is Kim Grant, director of football of Akra Hatsufolk, head coach. Mo TV. The best.